A former student threatened to shoot up the high school. It's really scary, just not knowing, I guess. That was the scariest part, not knowing. 24-year-old Jonathan Jourdain is charged with making a terroristic threat against his alma mater. Good evening, I'm Doug Emblis. Ginny is off tonight. Gates police say a parent reported a concerning Facebook post by that suspect, which prompted a lockout at all district buildings. 13 Wham's Carla Rogner spoke with one parent tonight who described this long and emotional wait to reunite with her daughter today. Yeah, Doug, there were about 300 students in Gates Chai Lai buildings today for summer school camps and other programs. Everyone is safe, but one parent tells me it was terrifying to hear about the lockdown. You don't think it's going to happen this close to home? Jennifer Wiley learned about the lockout while her daughter was in her classroom at Neil Armstrong Elementary School. So I called the school because I figured, you know, something's going on. And all they could tell me was the kids are pretty much locked in the school. People aren't coming in. Um, people aren't going out. It wasn't until her daughter got home around noon that she could breathe a sigh of relief. She got off the bus and I, first thing I asked her, are you okay? And yeah, I'm okay. Like, like she didn't even know what was going on. Police say all district buildings were ordered into a lockout after a parent reported a Facebook post by former student Jonathan Jourdain, in which police say he threatened to shoot up the high school. Jourdain was arrested about five hours later in Rochester, and he's charged with making a terroristic threat. He allegedly told us that he was just quoting some rap lyrics that he had heard. However, in this day and age with these threats, we have to take them seriously and we have to investigate them. In 2015, 13 Wham News reported that a Gates Chai Lai student by the same name broke into the high school armed with a knife. Months earlier, he had allegedly tweeted about killing students and teachers. Police Wednesday would not confirm the suspect is the same Jonathan Jourdain. Police and the superintendent are commending the parent who reported the threat and praising staff who kept students calm. They were great. They kept everybody safe. They kept everybody uh, organized and ready to continue the day inside. However, parents like Wiley say this incident still serves as a sad reality check. All the schools are, you know, one of the safest places these kids should be at. They shouldn't be scared. Parents shouldn't be scared to send their kids to school. And school activities at Gates Chai Lai will continue as normal tomorrow. Going into the school year, the superintendent and police are urging everyone, if you see anything suspicious on social media, it's best to report it to police so they can work to keep kids safe. In the newsroom, I'm Carla Rogner. All right, Carla, thanks. A bit humid today, but uh, things have cooled down. Taking a live look there is the HD Wham Cam. Mark McLean is in for Scott tonight. To let us know uh, what we're going to see in the next 24 hours or so. Yeah, Doug, starting to extract some of that moisture from the atmosphere in the form of rainfall. And uh, you know what? We could use some of that rain uh, for a lot of spots, including areas west of Rochester that missed out on Monday's rain. So we've got about half a normal for July. Should be around three inches at about an inch and a half and uh, running a three inch plus deficit for the year as well. Now, the showers and sprinkles that we're seeing tonight, uh, not widespread in coverage, but uh, right around the throughway in Ontario County, seeing some of the action out that way, uh, seeing a, a little bit of a steadier shower south of Buffalo. And there was actually a uh, lightning strike in some of that activity uh, back to our southwest. But uh, again, not, not widespread at this time. We're going to see that drift into uh, Wyoming County shortly, uh, maybe just catching Warsaw. Now back to the northwest from there, that's going to be our better chance of seeing some rain. Uh, that'll, that'll arrive probably midday on Thursday. So brief stuff tonight. You wake up, it's mainly dry for forecast for the morning. And there's the front coming through. We'll find some showers developing, moving west to east with that front and uh, clearing out later in the afternoon. So tomorrow's kind of a little bit of an unsettled day, upper 70s at lunchtime, mid 80s at four o'clock, a little breezy. We'll talk about when the uh, temperature goes up even more coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Mark, thanks. There's some new information about the man accused of shooting two Rochester police officers, one fatally. Kelvin Vickers was indicted in the case today, but the charges in that indictment have not yet been revealed. Vickers was just released from a Massachusetts prison two months ago for a 2019 weapons conviction. Records show Vickers has prior convictions for strangulation and assault and battery with a dangerous weapon. He was originally charged with second-degree murder for the killing of Officer Anthony Mazurkowitz and attempted murder for the shooting of Officer Sino Seng. It is possible the grand jury will upgrade or did upgrade those charges. There's a lot of facts that will come out during the course of the trial, um, and I really 
um, can't speak to them right at this moment. At this time, I can't talk about the charges at all. Um, what this document simply says is that a grand jury voted charges. At this time, I can't tell you what the charges are. Vickers' connection to Rochester remains unclear. Again, he's from Massachusetts. Officer Seng, by the way, continues his recovery. And Officer Mazurkowitz will be laid to rest on Monday. And we will be broadcasting that service in its entirety live on 13 Wham ABC and on 13wham.com. A new chapter in allegations of abuse within the Rochester Catholic Diocese. Another round of mediation was underway today between attorneys for survivors and the diocese. As Jenny Ryan reports, this comes as the diocese is objecting to more than 75 survivor claims. In my, my whole life was taken away from me. What's 40 years of your life worth? That is the central question for both survivors of abuse, like this man, and the Rochester Catholic Diocese. Neither side has come up with an answer that is satisfactory to them in mediation talks. I have everything. I have the police reports. I have the depositions. This man filed a police report against his alleged abuser, James Mulcahy, but the statute of limitations had expired. He says Mulcahy abused him during the time he taught religion at St. Patrick's in Mount Morris in the late 70s. Mulcahy went on to become a chaplain at then Park Ridge Hospital and faces two other claims of abuse filed under the Child Victims Act. But the Diocese of Rochester has now filed objections to the claims against Mulcahy and more than 75 others explaining a statement, quote, the diocese is not questioning the veracity of these claims, but instead is asserting that these specific claims focus on persons or entities that were not and are not under the control or direction of the Diocese of Rochester. Within that are claims from victims at Aquinas, Bishop Carney, Cardinal Mooney, McQuaid, and others. The diocese arguing, in short, they did not hire, employ, train, or supervise employees of those schools. Attorneys for survivors are fighting that claim. Among the evidence, a diploma from Bishop Carney at around the time of some of the alleged abuses. To the right of the seal, the signature of two bishops. And above that, front and center, the crest of the Rochester Catholic Diocese. This objection filed by the diocese late last week is yet to is yet another point of contention between the two sides at a time when the tension is already very high. The mediation underway today is scheduled to go through tomorrow and 13 Wham and uh, Ginny Ryan will be following that. Monroe County has yet to name a new public defender, a position that's been vacant for eight months now. But County Legislature President Sabrina Lamar announced today she's supporting this man, Buffalo Attorney Robert Fogg. Lamar says her choice was based on the need for diversity and inclusion in the office. But some current employees of the Public Defender's Office are not supporting Fogg, and the Democratic Caucus says it's looking forward to weighing in on the decision. Developing news tonight, a victory, it appears, for President Biden. Senator Joe Manchin says he has struck a deal with fellow Democrats on taxes, climate measures, and health care costs. What was known as the Build Back Better Act is now billed as the Inflation Reduction Act. In a lengthy statement on his website, Manchin suggests a 15% minimum corporate tax, a plan to lower energy and health care costs and reduce emissions by 40 percent by 2030. This is expected to face fierce opposition from the GOP. The Federal Reserve raising interest rates today three quarters of a point for a second straight time in a hope of quelling inflation. The increase means borrowing will be more expensive as mortgage, auto loan and credit card rates will also go up. This marks the fourth rate hike from the Fed this year and there are some indications these increases are having an impact. I do not think the U.S. is currently in a recession. Um, and the reason is there are just too many areas of the economy that are, that are performing, uh, you know, too well. And, and of course I would point to the labor market in, in particular. Uh, and looking ahead, the Fed chair says interest rates could still be uh, raised again in the future. The Federal Reserve's hike in interest rates generated a rally on Wall Street today. Even though it was widely expected, the Dow was up 436 points, the Nasdaq up 469, and the S&P 500 up 102 points today. 
There's a new effort to boost employment in Rochester. The city rolling out details for the Rock the Block Employment Fair. More than 50 businesses, including Amazon, Wegmans, and RIT, will be at Jones Square Park this Saturday seeking to fill positions. We had about a couple hundred people that were employed through these fairs last year. Um, the one at East High School at the very end of the year, we had over 100 just from that event alone. Uh, we did meet an individual um, at East High School that got into the rejob program and, and now has a career in the construction industries. This is the first of four employment events held uh, monthly until October. Coming up, he was America's big brother, remembering one of the stars of an iconic television show. And fires and floods, the threat of extreme weather right into the weekend. Tomorrow morning on Good Day Rochester, we'll have...